trust is the bedrock as far as we are concerned and for google pay even more because it involves money right and like i said money will always make people feel scared about hey what happens if this goes wrong consequences can be heart wrenching maybe for where we are today if you and me lost 500 rupees we would be sad about it but it is not the end of our day Thanks. there are people for whom if they lose 500 rupees it is a very material difference there like yeah we actually make sure that we have a dedicated team and these are experts from all disciplines right everyone working constantly around the clock trying to figure out ways to predict where something is anomalous prevent it so clearly we, we just announced right like last year we said look we prevented about 12000 crores worth of suspicious transactions this year we just announced for the last one year it's about 13000 crores hi everyone we have sharath bulusu who heads google pay india and uh, is basically uh, part of the google pay product uh that's right. lead who uh, oversees google pay uh, growth in india right that's right he is going to share the journey of google pay uh, in uh, the broader context of what google is planning in uh, its india partnership program or um, its india plans first thing that uh, i as a person who is interested in who is a user for google pay is that what has been the journey since last year till now let's hear it from you yeah absolutely no thanks uh for that question i think what's been very interesting over the last year is digital payments still continues to grow right i mean for many of us we think of it as a hey this is it it's there we all use it every day almost for every purpose but when you take a step back and you look at how many people are actually using digital payments you realize the total number in india who are using that is sub 400 million in a country of 1.4 billion people so i think what we continue to see is more and more people adopting digital payments in general and obviously google pay being one of the ways for them to do that we see that growth different types of usage and growth is not just new people coming to the platform right it is also people using it for different purposes uh they use it for i mean all the common things that we can think of like need to pay a friend need to pay a tuition teacher pay at a shop etc but a lot of new things have been opened up a few years ago uh the ability to apply for ipos opened up from upi that becomes one thing upi created a mechanism called auto pay where you can have more control over your subscriptions instead of worrying about hey how do i control the subscription you can go into the payment app where you set it up and you can just manage it from there right you can even pause it resume it do things like that so we're beginning to see traction for these kinds of features but one very particularly interesting thing that has happened especially over the last year you would have heard about how we were beginning to think about credit and what we wanted to do there i think it's not just what we are trying to do ourselves as an ecosystem that change is beginning to happen and the way we see it is when upi started we all paid out of our bank accounts that is what we connected to the upi act now what happens is you are able to connect a rupe credit card you are able to create a upi lite account uh, which is like a small pin free safe way for you to make small payments right uh, you are able to attach upi credit lines prepaid instruments uh, you are able to do subscriptions so the number of modes and forms of payment is beginning to grow and i think that has been very very interesting to watch how people use it in different ways in fact uh, you mentioned upi lite so that's why i would like to ask one question which i have heard many people uh, from uh, who i interact with yeah uh, who have been raising questions because how safe is the upi lite because as you said that i don't need a pin then uh, what is the uh, defense mechanism what is security mechanism which ensures that that wouldn't be used as a means of entering into my uh, digital backyard and then yeah. probably uh, face some kind of insecurity yeah so i think the first thing i would say is that the hallmark of a lot of the indian payments ecosystem whether you look at how the regulators have approached it how the operators of networks like upi npci in this case or how individual players have approached it security has always been at the top of their minds in fact look way back in the day when we said two factor authentication is going to be mandatory for all indian card payments it felt like a crazy thing but for a country like india where there's variable levels of uh you know understanding about how to stay safe online that made a very big difference it created the confidence that people have as a lot 
specifically about UPI Lite, what I would say is, one, the money is actually with your bank account. You're not putting it in an app. You're not putting it somewhere else. The UPI Lite wallet is actually attached to your bank. But what's key difference is that each transaction doesn't go into your bank uh, systems. That money is sequestered separately and you only spend out of that. The way you stay safe and you're trying to balance this with convenience is the size of an individual transaction is limited. You cannot do a transaction of more than 500 rupees on UPI Lite. Mm -hmm. So I come to this one question which I think is pertinent with every product manager is customer acquisition. And with own pay, uh, uh, Paytm, and so many other platforms already existing, which actually had preceded uh, Google Pay. It's earlier over the also days. Yeah. What is the customer acquisition that you are seeing? Because I uh, probably, from my understanding, could be wrong, is that uh, there would be a certain degree of saturation in the urban space. And there could be a lot more uh, greenfield in uh, the rural, semi-rural zone. How does Google Pay read the Indian consumer segment? And where do you think is the bigger scope? And how are you approaching yeah. that? So, I think you have a fair point when you say that there is more opportunity as you go outside the city to bring digital finance to people from two perspectives. One, that is kind of the segment where not enough adoption of digital finance has happened. But the second thing which is very important is that, that is, those are also the places where generally the financial infrastructure that you and I take for granted in cities is not easily available. Even if you think of something that is as old and staid as a as an ATM, right? you won't find it as commonly and easily there. right? Bank branches, NBFC branches. So I think digital finance has a lot to do in terms of financial inclusion. So there I think was a very nice alignment of saying the user gets disproportionately high value. They get top class services. They get the same access to financial services as somebody in the city. If we make the digital financial products easy to use, we make them safe to use, we make them intuitive to use, right? But even in the cities, I don't think it is true that, you know, there aren't new users. Just purely logically, there will always be young people growing up. A 17-year-old kid today, in a few years, will be graduating from college, becoming a wage earner on their own, using their own UPI app. But also, you look around in urban India, there are a lot of have-nots even there. Right? They, they, however you want to term it, it could be because of economic reasons, it could be because of social reasons, gender inclusion. There is still like, the participation of women in the workforce, consequently in commerce and payments in India, is still quite low. So every step that we take to make it easy for users from all these different segments, right? how do you give young people the confidence to use digital payments? Yeah. Understandably, when you're when you have your first job and you're just beginning to earn, you'll also be more scared about your money and you don't want to keep it safe, you want to save, you want, you want to think about how do I utilize it in the best possible way. Um, women, for multiple reasons, uh, some social, some economic, etc., have not been as included. And we've done a lot of work in the space with organizations like Seva Bank, with Women's World Banking, uh, with the Mandeshi Bank, to try and understand how can we help make products that work better for people who today feel intimidated. So I think there's still tons of scope to grow and bring the value of digital finance, digital payments to people in cities as well as rural locations. One uh, question that I guess which comes up is the credit uh, yeah. options that I is coming up because uh, I guess Google Pay is planning to get into that uh, space in a big way. Uh, why don't you uh, give us a sense of what your uh, plans are in terms of credits and how do I, as a credit seeker, ensure that my interests in terms of understanding the conditions or the criteria for the credit get assured or... Yeah. Uh, taken care of before I accept any such carry down. No, absolutely. In fact, this this morning I was talking about how even before you get people access to credit, first job is empower them with the education and awareness. So because credit, it allows you 
to do things that would otherwise have been unaffordable. It might help you to invest in your future by investing in education. Think of the world of education loans or investing in a home, etc. So the potential to open up lives for people in a positive way is huge. But it also has the potential to go wrong, right? Um, it is not just a matter of whether you are a person who is conscientious about discharging your debt, right? Like repaying and all. It's also a question of taking the right amount of credit. There is an amount of credit that if you gave me would be irresponsible because I wouldn't be able to repay that kind of credit. Now, the user understanding that on their own is the most powerful thing. Because if we do that, then we're not relying on somebody else. We're relying on the user saying, I'm empowered, I will make the decision, right? And to that end, one of the things that we do is bringing the power of Google's AI. Say, hey, we're going to create a support guide that's powered by our Gemini models that will help the user get answers to questions about credit. So it could be simple things like, hey, if I take this, what kind of fees will I have to pay? If instead of 12 months, I want to repay in 24 months, you know, what would be different? Sometimes the, the tenure makes changes to the conditions that you get it under. So that is one side. The second side is in the US, to rent an apartment, I had to show my credit report. To get a job, my credit report was checked. And I think that will happen over time. Even in India, the, the role of credit reports will become more important. So we enable people to access their civil credit report from within GPay. Credit reports are available, but what we also do is make it easy for the person to understand it. Right? How do you how do you read it, understand what's there? And finally, we put a quiz at the end of it. We say, hey, you just saw your credit report. Try answering a few questions about credit. Amazing thing is the vast majority of people, they will get at least one question wrong. Absolutely. Right? Because I think financial literacy is a big challenge in a yeah. country. And so the way I, but I flipped that to the positive saying, hey, by the time they finished the quiz though, now they have learned what was wrong. They've learned one new fact, right? And that gives us a lot of satisfaction because we feel confident that as we ask people to embark on the journey to access credit, we are equipping them better, right? Now in terms of credit itself, we partner with, you know, well-regulated lenders. We care about that because the reason people come to Google is that they trust Google to do the right thing. And it is important for us to uphold that trust um, in matters of finance even more, right? And therefore, we work with carefully chosen partners who have the reputation of doing really good, well-regulated activity, etc. And then what we do is, how do we help the user get connected to them, right? We help them with a smooth, intuitive, friction-free application flow. Um, the lender makes all the decision on how to underwrite, how to decide whether to give a loan, what is the size, etc. Uh, and then the other side is, it may not just be credit they get from us. You could have a Rubik credit card that you got through your bank maybe, not through GPA. But you should be able to connect it to GPA and use it. That's the other side, right? The interoperability of it. Saying that, let's see, if I give you credit with a lot of strings and say you can only spend it here, you can only spend it there, only through this app, only through that app, it doesn't liberate your life as much as it should. But if it's connected to something like UPI, you can go in and say, hey, I can use this wherever I want to without worrying about, am I a user of app A or app B? So to understand this, maybe let me take a contextual case in yeah. just a hypothetical one. Uh, say, for example, a farmer Is it? in some village where productivity is not very big, he or she uh, as in I'm saying he or she because he or his wife, you know, whoever's name he is going to, he is trying to seek loans uh, or has the rupee card, uh, may not have a smartphone. It's probably uh, the, the number is aligned with his uh, small uh, phone. Uh, a feature phone, yeah. Ah, feature phone. And this person is planning to take a loan for his next uh, crop that he has to uh so, and there are fertilizers, there are other, this thing, maybe he or she also um, uh, probably is taking a loan for some other, as you said, education yeah. loan or whatever. Now, in these kind of situations, how does a person in that kind of a rural environs with a feature for may not be a very conversant with yeah. reading English or uh, the language script of whichever because Google yeah. is good with regional languages and you have partnered extensively with regional yeah. languages. I give you that and say that okay with whatever regional language text that comes. Oh. How does Google 
एड्रेस और जी पे एड्रेस दिस काइंड ऑफ सिचुएशन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सेट लुक एज ए कंपनी और प्रोडक्ट्स हैव टिपिकली बीन बेस्ड ऑन इंटरनेट बेस्ड प्रोडक्ट्स राइट वी हैव डन स्टफ विद फीचर फोन्स इन सर्टेन प्रोडक्ट एरियाज um sms based search way back in the day in india etc uh, certain kinds of voice based modalities can be unlocked with a feature phone but when it comes to credit it becomes a lot more complex right because the the application for a credit process uh, in involves you submitting fairly detailed information you want to make sure you're not submit, submitting something uh, with an error right that the num- like a pan number that it is correct your spellings are correct all of that lot harder to do well on a feature phone so i don't think we are yet saying that we figured out what to do for users with feature phones yeah as long as the user has a smartphone it works but what i would say there is i i mean maybe this is true of all people who work in technology in general i'm an optimist that that spread of access to the internet whether through smartphones or some other means will only keep growing yes right because think of how the cost of these things has come down think of I mean even though you pointed out connectivity and connectivity continues to be a challenge in some places I think the spread of 4G and even 5G in India is mind boggling right like far ahead in in many ways so even the fact that the cost of and the cost of solidity is exactly probably the lowest in the world yeah. so that gives me the confidence that see one more and more of these people will have devices and connectivity sometimes it might be there is one within the entire family but as long as that is there that access becomes opened up the second thing that i would say and this is maybe not necessarily my area of expertise but i would say that look if you're talking about a farmer you're talking about uh, someone with a particular background that qualifies them for better loan products because it's a priority for the government to lend to agriculture to women owned businesses and so on then i think they should also be able to find that information today what happens is if they go to the nearest place to get a loan that place may not be linked to that particular scheme right and we think of the mudra scheme which enables small businesses to get loans at much better rates mm. that information and you know as a company whose goal is make organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful helping them find that information understand it in their own language in their own style will help them go to the right place i'm willing to accept that we as one company will not be able to satisfy credit demands for all different reasons in such a large diverse country we'll be able to do it for some people but somebody else might be the right answer in that case it is google's job should be help the user discover that right but to the extent that we have the right partners the right lending partners the right connection to help them get the credit that is appropriate for them our take would be help them get it from a reputed partner someone who has good underwriting practices good collection practices uh give them the digital tools to say hey i want to make a prepayment i can quickly do it through bharat connect or what is what we used to be bbps yeah. now recently rebranded as bharat connect can i just connect my loan account there and whenever i have a little bit of a windfall or some extra money yeah. do a prepayment so that you know i get the loan off faster right make sure that as i start repaying that loan when i started i may have had a credit report that was practically empty maybe i had only my name and address now it has my repayment history do i understand that and understand the importance of maintaining it well right these are the places where i think we can truly make a difference in the longer term what i think is beginning to happen is if you looked at the unified lending interface announcement by the rbi i think there's something magical that's probably brewing there it is like the upi the early upi moment but for credit of saying that there is a vast wealth of the signals that help somebody do proper underwriting that are there in different places to take your example of a farmer say a dairy farmer the production records and the sale records of that person yes. are a signal of how healthy their business is but today there is no structured way for a lender to say hey i will access that and uli is trying to solve that but i think as that happens you will see more and more inclusion happening and easy access to exactly the money which is there for yeah correct see our country overall retail credit outstanding which is like you know loans to individuals for all personal purposes is a rough way to think about it though there's a more technical definition is about 50% of gdp yes you, know, you compare that to where our aspiration is in terms of where we want economic growth to be people's lives to be that number should be well over one now should it be like you know 
a multiple of three, four times GDP, or should it be somewhere around one point something? That is for an economist to say. I'm not the but clearly it is not half. So that tells you how big the gap is. I mean, just going through scope of growth, yes, and and that also is a signal of why you need many many players to come in. You need people who are good at technology and design, like Google. You need more lenders to come in. You need uh, organizations, both governmental and non-governmental, that play different roles, right? Like. Think about the self-regulatory organizations that are being created. Think about the role of regulators. All of them will have to come together to close that bigger gap, and it's not going to happen overnight. We all have to keep chipping away at it patiently every year. I'm sure as things like ULI happen, one day that UPI-like hockey stick growth will start. Very interesting. Shall uh, my last two questions, and I'll start with this. You are in India, who has probably grown up in various cities of me, so. You would know the context when I use the term Google Guru. That's the kind of trust, faith people have yeah. on Google. Given the kind of surge of cyber crimes, I think, right. the kind of uh, there have been absolutely heart wrenching and scary uh, uh, cases of people being digitally constrained uh, till. Uh, for a certain span of time, with all their money has been siphoned out and uh, and whatever. <laughs> Given all of that, I would like to understand the way Google Pay looks at cyber crimes, how it can help solve these uh, these problems, these crisis moments in people's life, especially for those senior citizens who are reluctant to use technology because they're life savings are there is there in one bank with which they are probably going to uh, try and live their entire the remaining part of their life and these are the people who are so vulnerable that they are the ones who are being hit first in the, and i'm sure i don't know about you but including me uh, there have been moments when we have been uh, we have faced some kind of a minor uh, such hit by somebody or some good so given all of that how do you? How does Google Pay look at addressing this cyber crime issue? That's number one. And the second part of the question is that how do you think uh, AI can play a journey for Google Pay in addressing this and lot more other big questions? So, yeah. Look, you're absolutely right that it's written not just in matters of money. Generally, as a company. We have benefited massively from the trust that people have placed in us. And it's also come because we've invested to win that trust, right? Build the right kind of product, do the right thing. And I think for us, maybe even more than any other asset we can think of, technology or otherwise, that is the biggest one. Because I can bring all the technology in the world in front of you, but if you don't trust me, you won't touch it. So I think trust is the bedrock as far as we are concerned. And for Google Pay, even more because it involves money, right? And like I said, money will always make people feel scared about, hey, what happens if this goes wrong? Consequences can be heart-wrenching. Maybe for where we are today, if you and me lost 500 rupees, we would be sad about it. But it is not the end of our day. There are people for whom if they lose 500 rupees, it is a very material difference in their life. Yeah. And so internally, one of the things we do is we actually make sure that we have a dedicated team and these are experts from all disciplines, right? AI and ML, product managers, designers, analysts, everyone working constantly around the clock trying to figure out ways to predict where something is anomalous, prevent it. So clearly we just announced, right? Like last year we'd said, look, we prevented about 12,000 crores worth of suspicious transactions. This year we just announced for the last one year, it's about 13,000 crores and mind boggling numbers, right? But that also tells you the scale and scope of the problem. 30,000 crores in rupees. Yeah, in rupees, yeah. But it's just it's like, yeah, no, yeah. for our country, like if you consider how many people are using EPI, that is still a mind-boggling number, yeah. right? And the fact that we're able to use technology to prevent that is actually good for us, right? The fact that we're able to prevent that much kind of, you know, bad stuff from happening is, is really, really like one side, a source of pride. But the other side, it's also the sense of responsibility of saying that, that is not done. See, let's be honest. The, the people who are the people who are running scams, they're also very inventive. They're constantly on the lookout for new ways to find a way into somebody's life. 
trick them into paying up money, etc. So I think we also have to be a step ahead and employ sensible technology. But that's not the end of it. We also have to educate the user. See, this happens with every change in technology and products, this cycle repeats. I remember talking to somebody who was saying, hey, when debit cards were introduced, we had to tell everybody to keep their pin safe. And it took a few years for people to realize, oh, this pin is not supposed to be stapled along with the, sort of the debit card and kept there. It has to be kept separate. It has to be kept safe. UPI went through that same journey. Telling people, no ATM uh, on ATM. Yeah, they will, they will show that you have, don't share your pin with exactly. somebody else. No, it's still country. Yeah. I mean, why are the banks taking the effort to do that? They could have instead used that thing to promote something else, right? But why are they promoting safety? Because the level of literacy when it comes to staying safe with respect to online is still very variable in our country. So I think as an industry overall, it's our responsibility to make sure we do the right thing. And that's why we constantly try to educate users on how to stay safe, how to set the right kind of passwords. If we detect that something is off, we alert the user. Uh, when we give alerts to users, like saying, hey, are you sure you want to do this? We don't just ask that. If we think the user is comfortable in a different language. See, in India, what happens is there are people who use the app in English. But when it comes to the most important thing, they want it in their mother tongue, which may not, they may not be as comfortable in English, right? So we actually show them bilingual warnings. When we show the warning, we'll vibrate the phone. So that if you are in this tunnel vision where somebody is constantly telling you, kar do, bas pin enter kar do, pin enter kar do, you suddenly break that train of thought because something is shaped and you go, oh, I get it. I must pay attention to this warning, right? So you need that kind of, you need that kind of constant education of the user. The third thing is, see, this is also not one organization solving it. We think about money leaves one account, it goes to another account. It's part, yeah, it gets spread out. Like the people who scan, they, they'll split that money. If you talk to people in, you know, law enforcement, they'll tell you, look, if a scam happens, the money goes out, it gets split out and spent, sent into many directions because that helps the scammer evade detection, right? But again, the good thing is, if it's digital, there is a trail. And so as much as you start thinking about, oh, should I be scared of digital technology? The advantage is because there's a trail, as long as you have the diligence to follow it, you will follow it through to the end. And there, if there's the right kind of collaboration, the right kind of frameworks, and many of them are getting put into place, right? Some of these are being coordinated by state governments, some of them being coordinated by central government uh, agencies, some by the RBI and so on. That will actually help us break this break the back of this whole problem of cybercrime. Follow-up question to this is, Sharat, uh, say for example, in uh, in many cases, uh, even if it's 500 rupees may not be a big thing, but I find that I have it spam. Yeah. And on a Google Pay, if I, uh, if I recommend a blocking of that number or that ID, I recommend a blocking of uh, that, this thing, uh, uh, that, phone number or whatever it is aligned with, is there a way that uh, Google collates these data and actually acts upon it? Because this, uh, why I'm asking is that people who share such inputs, they need to be reassured that whatever their feedback yeah. is, is being taken into account. Yeah. So apart from just blocking it for yourself, when you report a transaction, and in GPA we actually have this feature to say report a user, report a transaction. When you do that, it becomes part of, you know, I told you we have a dedicated team looking after this. It becomes part of the input to them. And it goes into this whole thing as a feedback to say what kind of action should be taken. And there are cases, right? When somebody reports it, it could be everything from annoyance to really bad scale. So based on that, the appropriate action is taken. The thing that we need to work towards in our ecosystem is that today this still happens one app at a time. Right? Yeah. Like, and therefore... But at the same time, if I went and told you, let's do this across app, there's also the question of how do you do this in a safe way? How do you do this in a privacy conscious and respectful way? So I think it's not as easy a problem, but trust me, there are enough people across the ecosystem trying to figure out how do we do this together? And I think if that happens, it will have a you know multiplier effect. But within GPA, our take is that, look, as long as the information comes to us, we will make that an input and take the right kind of action. Okay. My last question Honestly, this is the last question. Uh, where do you see GPA a year from now and maybe five years from now? I mean, I'll just go back to what we think of as Google Pay's mission, right? Which in many ways is to make all things about money and finances simple for a user. 
uh, and what this means is give them simple, secure, fast access to digital payments. Mm. Make sure that Indians across the board have access to affordable, fair credit. Because, like I said, that's a huge gap today in our country. So if I look forward a year, I want to see us making more progress in that respect. Right? If I want to look forward five years, I would like to see us make genuinely meaningful advances towards inclusion. Like we spoke about earlier, right? Whether it is women, rural locations, like even in some cases, the elderly users of some of these systems. There are a lot of barriers for them to be able to use this confidently for everything they need. And when they don't, they miss out on all the advantages that come with it. Why would you not sit on your chair and make a bill payment instead of standing in line in the sun to make that same bill payment? I would like you to do that with confidence. And I understand today that there are people who are not able to do it with confidence. If you're looking forward a year to five years, I would say the more of the people who become comfortable with this and say, hey, because this is in my life, my life is better. I'm able to save time for myself. I'm able to use my money more wisely. I'm able to do this safely. I'm able to do this fast. I think that will make me a very happy product manager. Thanks, Sharad. Yeah. Thanks a lot. And uh, hope to meet you next time with more of your achievements and uh, then um, to understand what G uh, GPA has done to make the, their users like safer. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Thank you for taking the time. And uh, it's an absolute pleasure.